Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a premier field engineer specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion will be part six of a series focused on configuration manager current branch and the Microsoft Cloud, Azure, right? Uh, today's focus will be specifically on the cloud distribution point. A bit of an agenda as we get started, right? Uh, first, we'll talk about what is a cloud distribution point, why we care, and then really start to dig into the cloud distribution point, configuring it, watching it work, seeing an action, content lookup, some scenarios, and troubleshooting, and then we'll be done. So before we really get started, a couple of things. Whenever I was first approaching, uh, well, we go, go to this way. The cloud distribution point, whenever it first showed up in Config Manager, it was deployed using what's called the classic deployment model in Azure. And so whenever uh, I, was, I was approaching recording this session again, and knowing that as of Config Manager, I believe, believe it was 1806, we introduced a second deployment model called Azure Resource Manager, I thought, well, maybe I'm going to cover both of those in the session. But I've decided really just to focus on Azure Resource Manager. And the reason why is because as of July 1st, 2019, the first Config Manager release after that date, the classic deployment model will be removed, right? And so let's just focus on what will be there going forward and, uh, and so on, right? And that's the way that we recommend deploying anything to Azure, whether it's Config Manager or not, is using the Azure Resource Manager approach. Uh, another note on that. If you have a cloud distribution point that's currently deployed using the classic approach, then you need to go ahead and redeploy that as an Azure, Azure Resource Manager. Whenever we remove it from Config Manager, it's not going to be automatically transitioned to Azure Resource Manager. Uh, you do need to go ahead and redeploy that, right? Okay, so let's, uh, with that, let's, let's go forward and focus on Azure Resource Manager. First though, what is a cloud distribution point, right? Well, put simply, a cloud distribution point is a distribution point hosted in Azure, right? And hosted uh, because it's really a platform as a service kind of configuration, right? Uh, a, a, a cloud distribution point supports both on-prem, remote clients, no problem. Uh, when you create the cloud distribution point, what it does, it creates an Azure cloud service. There's Azure storage associated with it. There's actually two Azure virtual machines that are created. We'll talk about those and I'll show you those a little bit later on, right? So all of that is, is what describes and makes up this thing we call the cloud distribution point. So why do we care, right? Well, first of all, uh, we're in Azure, so we have the ability to scale and have flexibility, uh, one or more uh, cloud distribution points, if you like, right? Hopefully reducing the need for traditional uh, distribution points. Very granular controls. So in client settings, you can choose which clients are able to actually communicate and draw content from the cloud distribution point, right? We'll call this out maybe a couple of times, but there's a cost associated with the cloud distribution point. It is a cloud service. And so being able to specifically set the audience that might be able to use it uh, is one of those controls. We also have thresholds that will help you define and visualize what, what kind of content's coming out. Boundary groups. Now, boundary groups are for intranet-based clients only, right? And you can include your cloud distribution point in a boundary group, and it will be served up like any other distribution point. I'll probably say this a couple of times too. The cloud distribution point is always chosen last, right? Because it does have a cost. And so it's going to be the only one chosen uh, or the last one chosen and only presented when there's no other option. Now for internet clients, they don't rely on boundary groups. And so boundary groups really don't matter for them, but it does, uh, they do for intranet and so on. So that's another level of control. Security. Content is encrypted before it's sent to the cloud distribution point, right? Uh, additional benefits of having a cloud distribution point. Uh, again, scalable, so I mentioned that above. It, we're not gonna talk about probably the scale and how to tweak it in this session, but just suffice it to say, there's no automatic way to go ahead and, and, and scale a cloud distribution point in terms of, of in the Config Manager console. You could add another one, you know, kind of thing, you could do it that way. 
But there are ways, if you go into Azure, to be able to increase the size of the VM and do different things uh, if you need to do it that way, right? So there are uh, scale options. Uh, also, a, a cloud distribution point will work with branch cache, also alternate content providers, so you can interface uh, at that level. Now, the cloud distribution point can be a source location if you have pull distribution points. So that wasn't always the case, but now it is, right? You can just use the cloud DP to uh, transmit content down to pull distribution points. That's an interesting option. Yeah, it carries a cost with it. But if you have uh, networking that is better between your pull distribution points and the internet, and you can pull content down that way, may be an interesting option uh, in some scenarios. All right. The uh, other thing is administration. So once you install the cloud distribution point, using it is very similar. Well, not very similar, exactly the same as managing a distribution point. So you can manage them individually. You can put them inside uh, distribution point groups, all the same. And then finally, one, one question that, that is asked sometimes, especially now, is, hey, now that we have the ability to actually have the cloud distribution point as part of the cloud management gateway, why do we even need the cloud distribution point? Why would we choose the cloud distribution point uh, if we could just put up a cloud management gateway? And that's a great question. And the answer is, if you can put up a cloud management gateway, absolutely, put up a cloud management gateway, and you'll get the cloud distribution point functionality as a result as well. Um, if, if, cloud or if cloud management gateways, for whatever reason, can't be used, then you can still use the cloud distribution point to give that as an option. Or maybe you put the cloud distribution point out first as a plan to migrate to cloud management gateway at some point. Uh, several reasons might come to mind as to why that is an interesting option. But it is here. It can be used standalone. Don't have to have a uh, cloud management gateway just to get the cloud distribution functionality uh, at least as of 18.10. We'll see what the future holds, right? Okay. So requirements and restrictions, starting to kind of dig in a little bit to cloud distribution points. So in terms of prereqs, there are a few. Obviously, you need an Azure subscription. We need a place to put the cloud distribution point. You do need to have internet access and appropriate ports open and so on. Uh, you need a certificate, right? In the classic deployment model, which we're not really talking about here, you needed a couple of certificates. Here you need one certificate. It's a server authentication certificate. This builds the secure HTTPS channel for communication. Uh, and this can be a certificate issued by a public provider. In fact, we recommend that. Or you can use your own on-prem CA. Whichever one works, there's just a little bit extra uh, configuration you might need to do with your on-prem CA, meaning the clients need to trust that certificate, right? So you need to have that uh, in place too. So, so either way, uh, that's, uh, that's a certificate that we need, uh, need to have. In addition, we have uh, a client setting we need to uh, be concerned about, uh, DNS, right? So boundary groups is one we talked about. Again, it's not a prerequisite for all situations. Um, in fact, you can run a cloud distribution point without boundary groups, frankly, but the boundary groups help you control it for inter intranet-based clients. Okay. There are some limitations that you need to understand running a cloud distribution point. For example, uh, the, um, the ones on your screen, like you have no support at all for Pixie or multicast. Task sequencing is an interesting one. We do actually support task sequencing, but it depends on how you configure your task sequence. So specifically, if you try to configure a task sequence to download content locally when needed by the running task sequence, that's not going to work with the cloud distribution point. Um, cloud distribution points won't even be offered as a source when that's the case. However, if you do have the task sequence configured to download all content locally before starting the task sequence, then yeah, cloud distribution point will offer uh, itself as an option uh, in such a situation. At the content, yeah, I can't do streaming from a, uh, from a cloud distribution point. Also can't do pre-stage content uh, from a cloud distribution point. Couple of additional details. Right? So these, as I mentioned already, they're going to be uh, Azure VMs that are in place in order for you to host the cloud distribution point uh, in Azure. Right? So you can see, whenever we get to that point, uh, you can see where we're going to go create the cloud distribution points, 
well, should I say, where we're going to go create the VMs that will turn into the cloud distribution point that we label the cloud distribution point. You'll see that in the cloud MGR log again in a minute. The VMs are not huge, uh, and you don't want them to be, right? Because the, the bigger the VM, the higher the cost. They are extra small by default. You can intervene on that if you need to. Uh, some configuration is possible, uh, kind of beyond the scope, as I mentioned, but just know uh, that those are out there and so on. There are you know, costs associated. It's a, it's a cloud service. You have controls for that. So again, client settings to focus who's able to access it. There are alert thresholds for proactive tracking. Uh, the cost really comes from the traffic, but it's not just that, right? You have a cost associated with running the VM and the networking associated, which is why it's good to have those VMs be the extra small and, and leave them that way unless you need something bigger. Um, in terms of cost based on traffic, right? So the cloud distribution point will only be returned to clients when there's no other distribution point that's an option for delivering that content. Even in such a case, you can optimize the number of, of round trips to that cloud distribution point by using something like caching to optimize costs. So built in, we have peer caching. We also have the ability to use branch caching. There's Windows 10 delivery optimization in some cases. And to help you with all this, we do have cost calculators that are out there to help you kind of estimate in your environment the kind of content you move, how big it is, and, and so on. Right? Okay. So let's, uh, let's move on. Getting into configuring, right? There's a couple of things that we need to do before we actually get into the console and start to configure. We need to get the server authentication cert. So this is the cert that is provisioned to the cloud distribution point at setup. This cert is going to, to secure the client to cloud distribution point communication and uh, is also going to support HTTPS communication uh, from the client. So let's actually go look and see how we uh, how we build that out. And I'm just going to step through it with an on-prem certificate authority. I've actually already got the cert that I'm going to use for configuring the cloud uh, the cloud distribution board, but I want to walk you through and show you what this um, what this looks like. So let me pull in one of my virtual machines. This is my domain controller, one of them that hosts the certificate authority. I should also say that as we go through this, uh, in no way, I'm just showing, I'm just doing this to show you an example, right? You could have other ways that you would want to provision your certificate. Uh, we do now support 4096 bit encryption uh, in, in Config Manager. I'm going to show you 2048 bit encryption uh, just through the certificate authority, things like that, right? So please don't consider this an exhaustive, you must do it this way, you should do it this way, right? Really, you probably shouldn't do it this way because the recommendation is that you use a third party, uh, a certificate provided by a third party. But, but nevertheless, let's go through it. So the first thing is we need to make sure that our site systems uh, have the rights to be able to get these certificates. So the way that I do that is I just go into 80 users and computers and I'm going to create a group, All right? Let me go ahead and launch certificate authority as well. So that can be coming up. So here's the certificate authority. Let me pop that open. Okay, great. So we have 80 users and computers. I have my uh, config manager site servers group. And in that, I just have two members. One is my primary site server here. This is a site system I'm using for my cloud management gateway. And so this group is going to be used when I build the cert to actually give, uh, give permissions. So now that I have that, I want to go create the certificate. So here's my certificate authority. The way I'm gonna do that, I have this created. I'll, I'll show it to you right here's my certificate template that is actually already uh, created um, somewhere in here, there, right, here, right there is the name of it, right? There's my cloud distribution point. But to do that, I would go and basically duplicate the web server template, right? I'm gonna duplicate that. And then I'm just gonna start building it. Now, this is important. Don't, make sure you have server 2003. You don't want any of the later ones. You just want server 2003. And then on the general tab, you'll name it whatever you want to name it. I'll just say uh, config mgr lab demo because I'm just going to delete it right away whenever I create it. Uh, and then under request handling, a very key thing for this is allow private key to be exported. Now, a word about that. You definitely don't want as a practice to allow the private key to be exported. In certain circumstances, you do need to, and this is one of them. 
So uh, here, if you have a, if you have a need for a, a, a web cert or a, a server auth cert to support SSL, which you do in other circumstances with IIS and such, then you typically don't need to have that uh, cert have the private key be exportable. And so you would want to not uh, not just create one big general cert to cover all circumstances, right? You, if you have a need to have one that does have the private key exportable, create that for that specific purpose, per, uh, permission it such that only the systems that need it can use it, and so forth, right? So here I'm going to allow it. Under cryptography, I'm going to be using 2048, right? That's, uh, that, that's the default, so I'm good. Uh, under my uh, subject name, right, this, this is all going to stay default. And then under security, finally, I want to remove access to enroll from the enterprise admins. I'm going to add my configmgr uh, group, config manager site servers group. And here I want to allow, let me uh, hit OK. And I want to also allow enroll permissions here. And that's it. So I can go ahead and hit OK. Now I have that template here. So I'm going to close this down. The next thing I would do is just go forward and issue the template, which I'm not actually going to do, but certificate template to issue. Here I would click on this template and it would begin being issued uh, or, or being possible to be issued on systems in my environment. Now, I don't need this, and so I'm just going to uh, sort it. And, uh, well, okay, so I didn't actually issue it. That's okay. I'm going to uh, quickly just go delete. I'm going to pause real quick and be... Okay, good enough. Just wanted to quickly delete that. If I don't delete it whenever I need to, I will forget and my, my lab gets a bit junky, so that's why I did that. Anyway, so the next step is I do actually have my distribution point certificate. That's the real one. So I'm good. I'm going to take my domain controller out of the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in my config manager lab here and open up my certificates MMC that I have saved off. And so I actually in my lab have uh, the cloud distribution point already set up. Um, we're going to ask for a certificate for the cloud distribution point. You notice I don't have anything here that shows anything like a cloud distribution point. Um, I'll explain that to you as we go along and you'll see, but I'm going to go ahead and request the cert. So I'm going to request the new cert, go through and look for my cloud distribution point template, which is right here. Now, if you're looking for this and you don't see it, it's almost certainly because permissions on this cert are not allowed for you to be able to see it on a computer or whatever, right? So that's where my security group came in, where I put on the cert for config manager uh, site servers and so on, so I can see it. So this cert also says, hey, before you ask for and provision the cert, you need to ask for, or you need to add additional info. So specifically here, I'm going to add the common name. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put something stupid here because I'm not gonna use this. So this is demo uh, cbp.tailspintoys.com, right? So I'll put that in. So what I'm doing there, whenever we deploy the cloud distribution point, it will be known by a name of cloudapp.net in Azure, that's very likely not going to mean anything to you in your actual production environment. So this gives you a chance to name your cloud distribution point a name that will make sense with the other names of your servers and so on. So anyway, here it is, I'm gonna go forward. Now I'm going to click that and enroll. So it enrolls, no problem, finish. Now that I have that, you'll see that it is the name, the common name that I provided. So in, term, in order to use this cert, I don't need it in this store. Putting it in the store is a convenience because now what I want to do is go and export that cert for me to be able to use it in Config Manager. So I'm going to click on Next. Yes, I'm going to export the private key. If I had not set the flag to allow the private key to be exportable, that would be grayed out. And then I'm going to give a password to protect it. All right, and click next, and then I'm going to save it. And so I would normally save it into this folder, right? I've actually got my cloud DP PFX already saved up. So I'm just gonna cancel the process at this stage and move on to Config Manager. And that's why I mean, I don't really need this certificate to stay in my certificate store. What I need is for this certificate to be in the search store so I can then export it into the PFX format that I can then use in the cloud distribution point. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and close down my 
uh, my certs, certificates of MC snap in. So now I'm going to go into Config Manager. Here's my already provisioned and running cloud distribution point. I'm going to go into Config Manager and create a new one. So this illustrates that I can also, uh, I can have an existing cloud distribution point. I can add others if I need to for whatever reason. And so here I'm just going to go through. Now, now here's where we talked about at the beginning. Classic service deployment is still in the UI. That's not what I'm going to use. I just observe it here. I can choose to put my cloud distribution point in the Azure public cloud or government cloud. That's fine. So to actually get the information I need here, I'm going to sign in to Azure. And so let me just do that real quick. And I'm just going to pause the video real quick so you don't have to watch this. I'll be right back. Okay, so I signed in successfully, just finished up, right? See that? So what happened is the uh, wizard here automatically found my subscription ID. Now I have a couple, so make sure you are on the one you want to be on. Uh, and also automatically discovered my Azure AD app name. Now let me, let me just take a diversion real quick and uh, pull this aside. I want to show you this as a reminder, right? So here under cloud services, Azure services, if I go into my uh, cloud management piece and move over, right, under applications, talked about this in the introduction discussion. So what, what I did here is I configured or let Config Manager configure the web app and the client app, the server app, the service app and the, the client app. This was automatically done. The cloud distribution point looks for that and is able to discover that tied to the, the correct subscription I just signed into. Right, so that's where it gets it, and that's why being able to sign into it and have all that set correctly uh, is important. Right? Okay, so we're ready. We can go forward and we can configure. So under settings, now you need to import that certificate file. This is my cloud DP uh, cert file that I can then pull in. Right? It's going to ask me for a uh, password, so I'll do that. And then notice the deployment name up here is a, a series of, uh, well, what I call a GUID, it will change to whatever's embedded on the cert. And the service name will show. Now this is giving an exclamation point. The reason it's doing that is because I've previously deployed this cloud distribution point into Azure. And so I can't have a duplicative name in Azure. So if I wanted to do a second one, it would literally need to be a second real cert that I exported and I saved and I pulled that in and so forth. But you hopefully get the idea, right? And you see the one that's already deployed. You can choose the region under which you want to deploy. You can also choose whatever resource group you want to use that's already configured or create a new one in Azure. Whatever you want to do, you would then uh, move forward. Let me get rid of the wizard here. Then I'll go to the real one. So here is my real cloud distribution point that's up and running. So if I go to look at it, uh, you'll see on the alerts, the different thresholds of things you can configure. You can see whatever content is actually published automatically to the distribution point and so on. And the distribution point is good to go. Well, if you're just now starting to deploy this thing, you would want to be able to track what's going on, right? So there's a log that will help you see all of the activity. It'll take about 30 minutes for the cloud distribution point or up to 30 minutes for the cloud distribution point to provision. There's the cloud manager log here that opens a notepad, that's fine, that I can actually watch and see all sorts of activity. Let me go down near the bottom. Uh, as I start and stop different tasks, uh, going forward and retrieving keys and all of this, a great amount of detail that will help you really understand uh, what's going on. Let me go back into the logs here. There's also, um, let's see, Cloud DP. Uh, here, right, different things that will let you track what's going on. Notice there's a Cloud DP dash the service name. And here's one that I deployed that uh, I've since deleted, so no problem. Here's one that did not have a real service name, just a GUID. Right? So I can see these. This is the recent one. It's just got a little bit uh, in it, right? So uh, all of these can become interesting as you take a look and see uh, what's, uh, what's going on. Okay, but I have my cloud distribution point. It's cloud DP Steve Rack. The cloud service name is cloud DP Steve Rack. So let's go to Azure and actually see what that looks like. Let me pull in my uh, Azure instance. And so I have, I'm on my dashboard right now. I'm going to go down to all resources and I'm going to look for the name of my cloud DP Steve Rack, which is right here. 
So I'm going to go into it. And then specifically on the overview page, I mentioned that there are two virtual machines that run this, and there are. Here they are. Both of them are running. Right? So these, in essence, are my, uh, are my cloud distribution point. And you will notice that they are extra small VMs and, and so on, just like mentioned. And if we have virtual machines, we have to have storage. So let's go back to all resources. And then we'll scroll down a little bit, a little bit more. We have Cloud DP Steve Rack storage. So let's look at that. All right. So we said that we, or we showed, let me go back to the console just for a minute here. So I showed you on the properties of this that I have content already deployed out to the distribution point. By default, it will put the config manager client package uh, out there, right? And so now if I look at the storage for my virtual machine and scroll down and look at blob storage, which is what we use, I will see uh, content for, uh, that was just put out here uh, today whenever I configured this thing. And we are good to go. It's just the, uh, the um, client packages, right? So if I can drill in, I will see uh, additional details, CCM setup, whatever. So you know that it is actually out there and it is uh, good to go, right? So we pull that uh, back out. Okay, so uh, while I was talking there, I actually realized I went through two points. This one as well, we went through and configured the cloud distribution point connector. So now that we see that it's there, now that we know that it's in Azure and it's working, so what we need to do now is go configure the way by which Config Manager, whenever the clients need to access the cloud distribution point, uh, can actually resolve that, resolve that name, right? So the way that works is through by creating a CNAME record uh, in DNS. Let me pull in my domain controller to show you that. So specifically, if I launch DNS, here, uh, DNS, right there, right? And before I even do this, let me show you in the Config Manager console, uh, just for a minute, let me pull my lab uh, back in. So here we go. So in the Config Manager console under administration, we have our cloud distribution point. What we're specifically looking for is the cloud service name, and then also the cloud DP name so that we can translate one to the other. So here's the cloud service name, Cloud DP Steve Rack, but you don't see the cloud, uh, uh, the, the cloud DP's name in FQDN. So if I go to properties and then I look under uh, settings, here is my service name. This is as it is running in Azure. And then here's my Cloud DP name. Uh, sorry, I did that backwards. Here's my service name, which is the name I've given to the Cloud DP as it will show up in Config Manager. Here's the service name as it shows up in Azure. The first part, the name is the same. It just shows up as .cloudapp.net, right, in Azure. So we need to make that translation in DNS. So let me go pull this out and stay with DNS for just a minute. And so I've already actually done it. I've got the record created in my DNS Instance. So if I just click on this and then scroll down to, uh, well, it's probably up here, alias, a CNAME record. So I would do that by saying right-click, new CNAME record, new alias record. What I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, anytime the clients ask for this, redirect and give them this, right? Because that's the name as it exists in Azure. So what I'm going to do real quick just to show you that this is working is open up a command prompt. Uh, actually, let me do that from the site server just so, so you'll see it's working from the site server itself. I will bring the site server back in. Doesn't really matter. It will work from anywhere. DNS serves all of the uh, clients that I would have, but either way. So I'm going to ping. Um, I even forget the name of it real quick. Let me go back and look. Uh, Cloud DP. Cloud DP Steve Rack dot tailspin toys and it's going to redirect me to 157, 55, 193, 187. Now I'm not getting a response here, but I am getting translated. And so let me show you uh, what that uh, what that looks like in Azure. So as I pull Azure in, in my all resources list, 
I will have my cloud DP Steve rack and it's my cloud service. So if I go in there, it will show me specifically the IP address associated with this cloud service. Well, if I can do the magic of resizing and everything else, actually get this on the screen in parallel, you will see that the IP address that I translated to was the same one, right? So we did actually get the right IP address translated. DNS is returning that to us whenever I do the ping. So we, uh, we should be all good to go, right? So make sure that is in fact in place and workable, okay? Now, uh, let me pull out or get rid of the DC. I shouldn't need it any further. Now, in terms of um, actually working with this, configuring clients and so forth, right? We do need to do that as well. So let's pull back in this uh, particular site server and still in administration, go down to client settings. And now this is what I'm going to show you in default client settings because it's my lab. Generally, you might want to create a custom client setting for this. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on, on what you need, right? So in client settings, there is a particular setting for this. And so if I go in and configure uh, under cloud services, I can decide whether or not a client is able, oops, sorry. Yeah, that's what I want, right? Whether I'm able to get access by a client or not. With this, allow access to cloud distribution point. Now by default, that is turned on. Right? We talked about one of the controls that you have is client settings. In some cases, you might not want machines to be able to use the cloud distribution point and thus save some of the money that would be associated with, with using it. And so you could create the custom client policy to say no for some and yes for others. Right, pretty easy, right? So that, that's in client settings, one of the controls. The other thing is management point, right? So clients will retrieve uh, policy and all sorts of instructions and location services requests and so on from their management point. Cloud DP is no different. A Cloud DP is returned as an available option as a distribution point when the client asks for distribution point. And that particular cloud distribution point is in scope for the client to be able to use it, right? That's boundary groups and other things we'll talk about in just a minute. The thing is, you have to have the client to be able to access your management point to make that request. So how do you do that? Well, if your clients are on-prem, they have access to the management point, just like uh, normal and no problem. If your clients are remote, then you would need to make sure they have access to a management point. That would either be through... Uh, putting your management point exposed in the DMZ for internet clients or using the cloud management gateway, which we will talk about in a separate uh, session altogether, right? But that is a requirement. The clients have to be able to ask a management point for content locations and return the cloud DP. <laughs> the last requirement, of course, you've got to have internet access to be able to get to the cloud DP in case it is returned uh, and chosen as that source location, okay? All right, so we'll be right back to the lab, but, but next, kind of walking through how you would work with the cloud distribution point in action here. So let's step through this and give you a sample scenario. So still in administration, I'm going to move up and talk about boundary groups first. So we've already established that boundary groups do not matter for internet clients. Internet clients don't use boundary groups. But intranet clients absolutely do. So if you want your cloud distribution point to be returned as an option for intranet-based clients, you need to make sure it's in a boundary group that is accessible for intranet-based clients. So I'm just going to cheat. Uh, since, well, not cheat. I have one boundary group that encompasses my whole lab, so maybe that's cheating. But I'm going to go ahead into properties, and I'm going to add my cloud distribution point as a source for content. So right now I don't have it there. I'm going to add it specifically so that it can be returned as a source. And just because I want to make sure that uh, everything is set and working, even, even though I may have a, uh, a problem in my lab with configuration, I'm going to go ahead and put it there as well in default and hit OK. All right. So now these are part of my boundary group. The next step is I need to have content on my cloud distribution point in order to uh, in order to serve it up to clients. 
So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do that by going to uh, a piece of content and adding the cloud distribution point. Now, let's talk about that for just a minute. What kind of content do we support? Well, it can be packages. It can be application content. It can be software update content as well. Now, a word about that. Right? In the early days of the cloud distribution point, software update content was not a supported form of content due to the assumption that most organizations would likely not want to absorb the cost of downloading software updates from the cloud distribution point and instead redirect over to Microsoft Updates and download it for free. And that is absolutely a valid assumption, except there were some organizations and or scenarios identified where publishing software update content to the cloud distribution point was seen as needed and valuable. And so in subsequent releases, we, we added support for the software update uh, content, but still recommendation where possible, go obtain it from uh, WSUS directly from Microsoft's updates directly so that you avoid the cost associated with, um, with downloading the content, which can be quite large these days. And finally, task sequence content. Right? So content delivered via task sequence is absolutely supported to be downloaded from a cloud distribution point. Here's the caveat, already mentioned it, a task sequence in order to run from, or sorry, to obtain its content from the cloud distribution point must be set in the deployment to download the content before starting the task sequence. Otherwise, the cloud distribution point won't even be presented uh, as an option, okay? So that said, let's go into an existing package or two. I, I'm going to use packages. I could use whatever. I'm going to go into, uh, well, just let's just do rich copy. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go into uh, rich copy and change the content location. So right now I have this on my on-prem distribution point. I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to add and distribute the content to my cloud distribution point so that only the cloud distribution point has the content that way it will have to run from the cloud distribution point so here we go add that in hit okay next next and off we go and processes are running behind the scenes to now put that on the cloud distribution point right okay now uh let me show you um yeah, let me go ahead and show you home on the server. The process of that content being added to the cloud distribution port. So SAP 0002-alpha is the ID. If I go into the logs, so all every time that you add content anywhere, it's all first started by distribution manager. So if I look at the distribution manager.log, and I'm going to have to do this in Notepad, uh, open with, open with, oops, here. There, right-click. Now I have it open with notepad and look down, right? I should see some verbiage about that content uh, storing, exiting. So we're going to go, go ahead and put out the content on the cloud DB, created, created package transfer job to send that to my distribution point. And here is the cloud DP. So this essentially is a handoff from distribution manager to uh, package transfer manager to actually go do the work. So let's go down to Package Transfer Manager uh, here. And again, look at that. Uh, come on, right click. Open with Notepad and scroll down. And we will have uh, lo you know, loading to the cloud distribution port, start uploading, copy and package. Here we go, it's done. Storage verified, you know, on we go. And so now if we go to the cloud distribution point in Azure, we should see that that particular package is there. And so let's go back to our all resources and go back to our cloud distribution point storage account this time. Uh, come on. Did I need to switch directories? Let's see, make sure I'm in the right one. Maybe I grabbed an outdated window either way yeah so go to all resources and now we have cloud dp steve rack storage account and now i'll look in blob storage and expect to see an additional piece of content that was uploaded 
And so I do see that. Here's my two alpha. That's the one I just uploaded. And if I look in it, you will see that this contains rich copy. Right? So I do have that content now on my cloud distribution point. So I should be able to go and run that on a, a system that has been targeted by that particular deployment. So let's go look. Where have I actually deployed this to? So I've actually don't have it deployed right now. So let me go ahead and deploy it to my, I'm going to do this in my lab, not something you'll probably do in production. Just go ahead and deploy uh, that content to my all systems uh, collection. So I'll pause while I do that quickly. So while creating the deployment, I will pause here and show you my distribution point options. So I'm going to say, uh, regardless, I'm going to download the content, whether it comes from my preferred distribution point or a default distribution point, neighbor distribution point, does not matter. So I'm going to create that. And so I have the deployment now created, I have the package, I have the program that I also had to create because I didn't have one, and the deployment. So now I just have to wait for that to show up on a test client machine. So let me pull in uh, just a client. This is a Windows 7 client on purpose, just to show that it will work on a Windows uh, Windows 7 client. So this is rich copy that I just put out. So let's go ahead and install that. Oh, and before I do, in order to track through the logs, I want to make sure that I have verbose and debug logging turned on on the client, the registry, because it, even though it will install, certain things won't be written to the logs if you don't have verbose and debug logging turned on. So let me go here to CCM and then go to logging and then at global log level of one is the default. So I need to change that to zero, which means verbose. And then I also need to add a key called debug logging. Just like that. Good enough. So now we're set for debug logging. Let's go ahead and try to install this. So we're uh, installing, we're downloading, so we should have the information already now to be able to see what's going on. So let's go into the logs, CCM logs, and we want to start with, let's just cut to the chase. Well, let's, let's kind of follow it through a bit. So location services is a key log, and this will return the locations where we can go and download the content. And you can see right here that my distribution point, the cloud DP is actually being returned because of the way I have things configured. So we're going to try to download from the cloud DP. I could follow that through to CAS, right? So CAS, well, it actually starts before CAS. It would be execution manager then, because that's for packages, gets the, uh, the response hands off to CAS to start the process of downloading the content. So here's CAS uh, as an example. So it's running through, trying to get the content and working through the cache then content transfer managers involved data transfer service is the one that I really care about because it will show uh, the downloading right and here's the files transferred and so on you see that they're coming from the cloud DP so no problem we are actually getting it from the cloud DP we have it installed uh, rich copies here now just got there so in essence you can see that's the cloud DP it's running didn't do anything special, treat it just like a standard distribution point, and good uh, good to go, right? Okay, so let's pull uh, the lab out of the picture and move on. So that's, that's the cloud distribution point in action. Again, not too hard of a concept, pretty, pretty common stuff we do all day long, except now the distribution point's in the cloud. All right, and just to tie your attention back, so you saw me ping the cloud distribution point, and it did not work. Right, but here I was able to access it, and just for continuity, let me go ahead and pull this back in for just a minute. Actually, I lost connection to my client. Let me get it back. Okay, so let me go to the client. Let me pull this back in. I'm going to run to the command prompt right here. Ping uh, cloud dp steve rack dot tailspin toys dot com. And it's running, and you see that we're pinging the cloud service, but we're not getting a response. That, so the lack of response doesn't mean it's a problem. It just means that the service isn't geared to reply to a ping request. But whenever you go to it uh, the right way and try to ask for content, yeah, sure, it comes down, no problem, just like you saw, and we're able to, uh, to use it. Okay. Now, uh, in, in terms of, of kind of digging into this a little bit more in... in 
uh, done with the demos, but just talking about a couple of other things. Talked about boundary groups, a couple of boundary group considerations, right? So you can figure in the boundary group just like a standard distribution point. The distribution points don't matter in the boundary group if you're dealing with internet clients. They do matter if you're dealing with intranet clients. And so if it's not in the boundary group, a cloud DP, it won't be returned. Don't worry about the fact that you could get a cloud distribution point returned because if you have anything other than a cloud distribution point that's accessible to the client, the client will prefer that. In my case, I only have the cloud distribution point in my boundary group just because I wanted to force it to go there. But if I had a standard distribution point in there along with the cloud distribution point or the client can find any standard distribution point to serve the content, it will absolutely have a higher priority than the cloud distribution point, right? So the cloud distribution point will return, be returned as a content location. Uh, again, preferred distribution points will always win. Uh, cloud distribution points are only returned if the on-prem are unavailable. And also, cloud distribution points will always be considered remote and will be the last in the prioritization uh, options. You can have multiple cloud distribution points if you want to. Multiples, certainly possible. You can configure them by region, which sometimes makes you think that cloud distribution points are preferred by region and they're not cloud distribution points are not region aware maybe at some point they will be but currently they aren't and uh and and so on right so uh be aware uh, be aware of that and then finally to reiterate the flow right preferred distribution points are always returned first non-preferred distribution points are then returned and then finally cloud distribution points are returned right so, so that, that's how it works to try to help you understand the flow of how the cloud distribution point works a bit more, let me show you a graphic. So I'll put this together to, to kind of illustrate um, how things work. So here you have your site server on-prem. You have your uh, cloud distribution point in Azure. You have your management point in the DMZ, as an example, uh, because you have to have a way for the clients to access the management point to get content location request handled. And then you have a couple of, of clients. So let's, let's kind of walk through it. So part number one, the clients are going to request content through the management, management point. They're going to talk to the management point. Uh, that content lookup will go against the database. We will return a list of available distribution points uh, through the management points to the client. This list will, will contain the cloud distribution point uh, in our scenario. And so uh, the clients will process through that and then evaluate all of that. The cloud distribution point is selected when other distribution points are unavailable. And then finally, we will go and get that content. All right. Now, I want to give you another kind of double click into this topic. It's not the cloud management gateway is talking, I'm sorry, it's not the cloud distribution point. It is the cloud management gateway. And I want to share that with you because we will be talking about that uh, next. And specifically, the cloud management gateway enables some scenarios that are far and above uh, preferable to just having a cloud distribution point by itself. So to be clear, the cloud management gateway uh, now has both the cloud management gateway role and the cloud distribution point role configured in one operation, right? So probably in most environments, the cloud distribution distribution point config we've gone through will hopefully not be something that you go through because you will configure the cloud management gateway. Here's the flow, right, of the cloud management gateway. It's different. Notice the management point does, the actual management point does not need to be on-prem. What I have is the cloud management gateway. I, I kind of put the cloud distribution point server out here separate. Uh, even though it's a combined role now, it used to be a, a separate role. We'd have to, have to install both. Now you just install the cloud management gateway, you get both, right? So kind of visualize these combined, but for graphical purposes, I also separated them. So what happens is the clients request content now through the cloud management gateway. The cloud management gateway forwards that request to the management point uh, on-prem or inside or wherever it is, the network. Content lookup is done against the database. The content locations are returned. Uh, the management point will return the list of distribution points to the clients through the cloud management gateway. So we get that, we evaluate it, and then we realize we do have the cloud uh, distribution point to get content from, and we will go get it 
again, a very similar process, except now the management point operations are handled through the cloud management gateway to the, uh, to the on-prem uh, uh, or local management point. Okay. Wrapping up, right? Cloud distribution point, troubleshooting tips uh, and tricks. So, you know, uh, one of the big things that tripped me up, and it may not trip you up, but it tripped me up enough that I want to share it with you, is this idea of the certificate revocation list. We do need certificates, one, in the configuration we talked about with the cloud management gateway, right? When you provision that certificate, if you are using your on-prem CA, uh, you have control of this. If it's a commercial CA, uh, you need to just validate with them. But, but either way, um, certificate revocation list checking. That is a commonly enabled feature on uh, a certificate authority, whether it's yours or uh, third party, doesn't matter. You need to configure Config Manager in a way that, that determines how it's going to respond. Checking the certificate revocation list is enabled by default uh, in Config Manager. You can get a, a security error on the client if certificate revocation list checking is configured but cannot be done. Right? It, and here's where you actually go into your site server and check um, whether you have certificate revocation list processing enabled. And as you can see in my lab, I'm, well, I'm using my own internal uh, certificate authority and I'm not enabling certificate revocation list checking. So I've disabled that uh, in Config Manager. Otherwise I would potentially, uh, or I would run into, uh, run into errors. So be aware of that, right? Another couple of things, just we've already mentioned, but just to, to wrap up, when we're thinking about troubleshooting, right, uh, there are certain logs that we can absolutely look at. So on the deployment of the cloud distribution point, that's all going to be recorded in the cloudmgr.log on the site server. Very verbose log, very useful information. You can follow it through. You can watch step by step how things are configured and as you're using that log. So definitely take a look at it. There's also the cloud DP dash cloud DP service name log. That one doesn't contain as much relevant information. It can in some circumstances, but be aware uh, that's there. In terms of using the cloud distribution point, right, on the server side, whenever you add the cloud distribution point as a distribution point option to a piece of content package, application, task sequence, software update, whatever, you will see that content start to move in three logs. First is the SMS DB mon log, right? That will acknowledge the configuration and trigger further action by the distribution manager log. Distribution manager, you saw, will pick it up and will hand it out to um, package transfer manager. Package transfer manager then will actually stage the content up to the cloud distribution point. On the client side, right? Uh, the actual log we start with to download that actually backs up as far as uh, policy manager and so on, whenever the client checks for policy, but then that's handed off quickly to the component that serves that type of content. And then that depends on the type of content for packages. As an example, it's execution manager. Execution manager then calls for the content and there's three logs involved directly for the content. Um, well, before the, so four logs. Location services actually goes and retrieves the content location. CAS, content transfer manager and data transfer service work through the process of pulling the content down, as you saw. A little bit of minutiae here, but important. So you saw the location services log on the client side. The content location acquisition piece is actually handled on the management point. There's a log there called MP underscore location. In fact, while I'm talking about it, I'll just show it to you real quick. Uh, so if we go back into the site server that also hosts my management point, and go to the logs. I believe this is enabled for verbose and debug logging. Hopefully it is. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, wrong log files. Let's do it this way. SMS CCM. I clicked the wrong thing. Logs. MP underscore uh, location right here. So I'm going to open that with Notepad. All right, and you will actually see that the uh, management point here, here it is processing, right, is actually running the procedure to determine where the content is. It's actually running a stored procedure in SQL, passing in the data to retrieve the content, and then 
uh, here is getting the cloud DP URL, right? Right here. And so you see the whole process. And so that's actually the process that goes on uh, to get it and so forth. And then that's returned to the client. We uh, get it through CAS, Content Transfer Manager, Data Transfer Service, and so on, right? So that's it, really. That's walking through the cloud distribution point, how it works, watching it uh, be configured, seeing it actually return content in my lab. It's a, a very useful piece to use. Again, hopefully you will be able to take advantage of the cloud management gateway, and then you won't have to configure a separate cloud distribution point. But if you need that, here's the information. We will wrap it here, and we will see you next time.